the last lecture I introduced the concept of minimal sufficiency and completeness of certain statistics or uh, again it, these are also the properties of the family of distributions. Uh, before we proceed further I will define a related concept that is called boundedly complete. boundedly complete statistic or boundedly complete family of distributions. So, we say that p is equal to p theta is a boundedly complete family of distributions if expectation of g x is equal to 0 for all theta and g bounded implies that probability of g x is equal to 0 is 1 for all theta. So, the difference from the definition of completeness is that there we wrote any function g. So, expectation g x equal to 0 for all theta and any function g if that implied that the probability that the function is 0 with probability 1 then it was complete. If I impose the condition that g is bounded then it will imply that uh, probability of g x equal to 0 is 1 then it will be called a boundedly complete family of distributions. So, we can say that completeness implies bounded completeness. However, the converse is not I will give an example here. Let x be a random variable with probability mass function given by p theta x is equal to x is equal to 1 minus theta square theta to the power x for x equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on and p theta x is equal to minus 1 is equal to theta. Here theta is between 0 to 1. Now, you can easily see that theta plus sigma 1 minus theta square theta to the power x x equal to 0 to infinity that is equal to theta plus 1 minus theta square divided by 1 minus theta because this is infinite geometric series with common ratio theta. So, this cancels out you get 1. So, this is a proper probability distribution you can say it is a shifted uh, geometric kind of distribution. Let us show whether it is complete or not. Okay. So, consider a function h x then its expectation can be written as h of minus 1 into theta plus sigma h x into 1 minus theta square theta to the power x, x equal to 0 to infinity. Now, suppose we equate it to 0 for all theta in the interval 0 to 1. Now, this term I take to the right hand side and then we divide by 1 minus theta square. So, it is reducing to h x into theta to the power x it is equal to minus h of minus 1 theta divided by 1 minus theta square. This is for all theta in the interval 0 to 1. Further this 1 minus theta square in the denominator. So, if I bring it to the numerator it becomes 1 minus theta to the power minus 2 and I can expand because theta is in the interval 0 to 1. So, this we can write as minus h of minus 1 into theta 
and this expansion can be written as 1 plus 2 theta plus 3 theta square and so on. Now, if I consider these two terms, the left hand side is a power series in theta and the right hand side is also a power series in theta. So, if I equate the terms, we get equating the coefficients of the power series on both the sides. we get h x is equal to minus x into h of minus 1 for x equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on. Now, if h of minus 1 is bounded, then h of minus 1 must be 0 because if h of minus 1 is not 0, then this function is unbounded because it will be x into some constant. So, for boundedness, the only possibility is that h of minus 1 is 0, which will imply h of x is equal to 0 for all x. That means, probability of h x is equal to 0 will be 1 for all theta in the interval 0 to 1. So, h is boundedly complete. not uh, uh, x is boundedly complete, but if h of minus 1 is not 0, then h of x is also not 0. This implies probability that h x is 0 cannot be 1. So, h is not complete, because expectation of h x is 0, but h x will not be 0 with probability 1. So, this is an example of a boundedly complete family of distributions, which is not complete. Now, there are uh, relationships between sufficiency and completeness also. Also, there is a general way of determining complete statistics. For example, if the distributions are in the exponential family, I have already given the example of binomial distribution, Poisson distribution. So, in the Poisson distribution, family is complete. If I consider sufficient statistics or minimal sufficient statistics, that is turning out to be sigma x i which is again having Poisson distribution with parameter n lambda. So, if Poisson lambda is complete, Poisson n lambda is also complete. So, sigma x i is complete. So, we can conclude that in most of the standard examples that we have discussed, the corresponding sufficient or minimal sufficient statistics will also be complete. Let me just take the example of uh, uh, non regular family. Say, Let me consider say x 1, x 2, x n following uniform 0 theta distribution. Then x n is minimal sufficient, we prove that x n is complete. Let us consider the distribution of x n that is n x to the power n minus 1 by theta to the power n 0 less than x less than theta it is 0 elsewhere. So, if I consider expectation of say g of x n is equal to 0 for all theta, then this statement is equivalent to g x n x to the power n minus 1 by theta to the power n d x from 0 to theta is equal to 0 for all theta. Now, this is equivalent to saying a function of x over all the intervals 0 to theta is integrated to 0. Again by 
the Lebesgue integration theory, it implies that g star must be 0 almost everywhere. This g star function I have taken to be this. So, this implies that g x is equal to 0 almost everywhere on 0 to infinity. This implies that probability that g x n is equal to 0 is 1 for all theta. So, x n is a complete a statistic. So, there is a relation between minimal sufficiency and complete sufficiency. In fact, we have the following theorem. If T x is complete and sufficient, then T x is minimal sufficient. However, the converse of the above statement is not true. That is, we may have example of say minimal sufficient statistic which is not complete. Let us take say x1, x2, xm, a random sample from normal with mean mu and variance sigma 1 square and y 1, y 2, y n. This is another independent sample from normal with mean mu and variance sigma 2 square. Here sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square are different. Let us consider the joint distribution of x 1, x 2, x m and y 1, y 2, y n. the joint PDF of x1, x2, xm, y1, y2, yn. Okay. That is equal to one by root two pi to the power m plus n, sigma one to the power m, sigma two to the power n, e to the power minus one by two sigma one square, sigma xi minus mu square minus 1 by 2 sigma 2 square sigma y j minus mu square. This we can simplify as 1 by root 2 pi to the power m plus n sigma 1 to the power n sigma 2 to the power n e to the power minus sigma x i square by 2 sigma 1 square plus m mu x bar by sigma 1 square minus m mu square by 2 sigma 1 square minus sigma y j square by 2 sigma 2 square plus n mu y bar by sigma 2 square minus n mu square by 2 sigma 2 square. So, if we apply the ratio by writing down this joint PDF at two points x y and say x prime y prime, then these terms will get cancelled out and we will be left with sigma x i square minus sigma x i prime square into parametric function x bar minus y bar into the parametric function x bar minus x bar prime y bar minus y bar prime and sigma y j square minus sigma y j prime square. So, if we write down this function here say f x y mu sigma 1 square sigma 2 square divided by say f x 
प्राइम वाई प्राइम म्यू सिग्मा वन स्क्वायर सिग्मा टू स्क्वायर देन दैट इज इक्वल टू ई टू दी पावर वन बाई टू सिग्मा वन स्क्वायर सिग्मा एक्स आई प्राइम स्क्वायर माइनस सिग्मा एक्स आई स्क्वायर प्लस वन बाई टू सिग्मा टू स्क्वायर सिग्मा वाई जे प्राइम स्क्वायर माइनस सिग्मा वाई जे स्क्वायर देन प्लस एम म्यू और म्यू बाई सिग्मा वन स्क्वायर सिग्मा एक्स आई माइनस सिग्मा एक्स आई प्राइम प्लस म्यू बाई सिग्मा टू स्क्वायर सिग्मा वाई जे माइनस सिग्मा वाई जे प्राइम सो दिस इज इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ म्यू सिग्मा वन स्क्वायर एंड सिग्मा टू स्क्वायर इफ एंड ऑनली इफ वी हैव सिग्मा एक्स आई सिग्मा एक्स आई स्क्वायर सिग्मा वाई आई सिग्मा वाई आई स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू सिग्मा एक्स आई प्राइम सिग्मा एक्स आई प्राइम स्क्वायर सिग्मा वाई आई वाई जे प्राइम एंड सिग्मा वाई जे प्राइम स्क्वायर सो टी इज इक्वल टू सिग्मा एक्स आई सिग्मा एक्स आई स्क्वायर सिग्मा वाई जे सिग्मा वाई जे स्क्वायर इज मिनिमल सफिशियंट However, T is not complete. Let us consider G T as a sigma x i by m minus sigma y j by n. Then expectation of G T is equal to zero for all mu sigma one square sigma two square. Because expectation of x i and expectation of y j is mu, so it is m mu by m minus n mu by n. But g t is not zero. Actually, probability that g t is not zero is one. Probability that g t is equal to zero is actually zero. So t is not complete. So this is an example of a minimal sufficient statistic, which is. not complete to determine complete statistics in general settings or to prove the completeness in general settings of exponential family one only needs to check the kind of parameter space that we are having so we have the following general theorem which i will state without proof for the proof one can look at the book of uh, lehman testing of hypothesis book so let x be a random vector with probability distribution in an exponential family say we write it in the form c theta e to the power sigma theta i tx into hx so here c theta is a function of parameter hx is function free from parameter and parameter is occurring in the exponent here theta is equal to theta 1 theta 2 theta k that is it is belonging to rk let me say it belongs to omega and omega is a subset of rk let us write t as t1 x and so on t k x then t is complete provided omega contains a k dimensional rectangle if you look at the previous example here this is actually a three parameter distribution here here what we are getting is 1 by 2 sigma 1 square or you can say 1 by sigma 1 square mu by sigma 1 square 
then uh, 1 by sigma 2 square and mu by sigma 2 square. However, they are not independent actually the parameter is 4 dimensional if we write theta 1 is equal to say minus 1 by 2 sigma 1 square theta 2 is equal to mu by sigma 1 square theta 3 is equal to say minus 1 by 2 sigma 2 square and theta 4 is equal to say n say mu by sigma 2 square. Then this is a 4 dimensional parameter, but there is dependency upon that. For example, given theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3, we can determine theta 4. So, the parameter space does not contain a 4 dimensional rectangle and that is why we could actually show that this is not complete, T was not complete here. We have seen the application of sufficiency in estimation problems. We saw that if we have an unbiased estimator, we can certainly improve upon it by conditioning upon the sufficient statistics. The result was known as the Rao Blackwell theorem. Now, if we couple this concept with the completeness, we get a stronger result. In fact, we can reduce the problem to determination of the uniformly minimum variance unbiased estimator. The resulting result which is actually associated with the name of Lehman Shafi. So, I will couple the two results Rao Blackwell and Lehman Shafi and we call it Rao Blackwell Lehman Shafi theorem. Let x have probability distribution p theta theta belonging to say omega and t x be complete and sufficient. Then h t is u m v u of expectation of h t, let us call it say g of theta. That means, for any estimable unbiased estimable function g theta, if I have an unbiased estimator which is dependent upon the complete sufficient statistic, then that will be actually u m v u e. Let us look at the proof of this let say d x be an unbiased estimator of g theta. Then you will have consider expectation of d x given t let me denote it by say d star. Since t is sufficient, d star t will be free from theta, because the conditional distribution of x given t is independent of theta. Therefore, this expectation will not contain any term of theta and we can call it d star t. And so, d star t is d star t, suppose I write capital T here, this is an estimator. Now, we have already seen that by Rao Blackwell theorem. d star t is <coughs> also unbiased for g theta and variance of d star was less than or equal to the variance of d t. Now, consider expectation of h t minus d star t. Then that is 0, because both of these are unbiased for g theta. 
Now, this is a function of t and t is complete. Since t is complete, the above statement implies that h t must be equal to d star t with probability 1. Essentially, it proves that h t is a unique unbiased estimator of g theta. So, h t is u m v u e. Actually, g star uh, d star is also u m v u e, but these two u m v u e differ only on a set of measure 0. Now, this result is extremely useful for finding out the u m v u e s. We have seen actually in the earlier method of lower bounds that many times whatever best unbiased estimator we are able to think of the variance of that is not attaining the lower bound whether we are considering the Fresche Rao Kramer lower bound, Bhattacharya lower bound or Chapman's Robbins Kiefer uh, low, lower bound etcetera. In many of the cases we saw that the variance of the unbiased estimator was bigger than the lower bound the corresponding lower bound. However, this method when we are considering a function of complete and sufficient statistic it immediately proves that the corresponding estimator will become uniformly minimum variance and by estimator. Essentially, what it is doing it will actually show that the corresponding unbiased estimator is actually the only unbiased estimator available except of course, on a set of probability 0. So, since it is unique certainly it is u m v u e. So, if we go back to various problems where the lower bound was not attained for example, if you consider normal mu sigma square where mu is unknown and we were considering the estimation of sigma square. So, let us consider say x 1 x 2 x n follows normal mu sigma square mu and sigma square are unknown ok. And we have this s square as 1 by n minus 1 sigma x i minus x bar whole square this is unbiased for sigma square. Now, in this problem x bar and s square is complete and sufficient. So, s square is u m v u e. We had noticed here that in this particular case the lower bound that was attained by the method of uh, Fraser or Kramer it was lower than the variance of s square. The variance of s square was uh, 2 sigma to the power 4 by n minus 1 and the lower bound was 2 sigma to the power 4, 4 by n. But here in this method u m v u e proving is easy because we are just looking at the expectation of s square since it is equal and it is a function of the complete sufficient statistics. So, it becomes u m v u e. Let us take other related examples also. x 1, x 2, x n following uniform 0 theta. Here we have shown that x n is complete and sufficient. Now, if we look at expectation of x n that is x into n x to the power n minus 1 by theta to the power n x, then this is equal to n by n plus 1 theta. That means, n plus 1 by n x n is unbiased for theta. Now, this is a function of complete sufficient statistics. So, by Rao Blackwell Lehman Shafi theorem, we conclude that n plus 1 by n x n this is u m v u e for theta.
we have also seen the standard distributions like Poisson distribution, where for lambda we are able to derive the u m v v, but for lambda square we were not able to derive or if I consider e to the power minus lambda, then we were not able to derive the u m v v, but using this method we can derive. Let me explain this here. Let us consider say x 1, x 2, x n following Poisson lambda distribution lambda positive. Now, here x bar or you can say sigma x i this is complete and sufficient. Suppose I am considering g lambda is equal to e to the power minus lambda which I had explained actually this is probability of x 1 is equal to 0 that is the proportion of 0 occurrences in a given problem. Let us define say d x 1 is equal to 1 if x 1 is 0 and it is equal to 0 if x 1 is not equal to 0. Then if I consider here expectation of d x 1 then that is equal to probability of x 1 is equal to 0 that it is equal to e to the power minus lambda. So, d x 1 is unbiased for g lambda. However, this is not u m v u e because this is not a function of the complete sufficient statistic. So, if I apply the Rao Blackwell lemma and Shafi theorem, if I consider Rao Blackwell lemma and Shafi theorem, if I consider expectation of d x 1 given t, t sigma x i or x bar we can write, then this is u m v u e of g lambda. So, the only thing remaining is that determination of this function, we can de determine it easily. Let us uh, denote it by h t expectation of say d x 1 given t is equal to small t. Then this is equal to expectation of now d x 1 takes only two values 1 and 0. So, it is equal to probability of x 1 is equal to 0 given t is equal to because d x 1 is equal to 0, then probability of x 1 is not equal to 0, but value 0 multiplied, then that value will not matter. x 1 not equal to 0 given t is equal to t. So, this term is vanishing. So, we need to only determine this conditional probability that is probability x 1 is equal to 0, t is equal to t divided by probability t is equal to t that is equal to probability x 1 is equal to 0. Now, this t is nothing but sigma x i, i is equal to 1 to n. If I say x 1 is equal to 0, then we can say sigma of x i from 2 to n is also equal to t. Now, here you notice that the sum of independent Poisson's is Poisson. So, the distribution of t will be Poisson n lambda and distribution of sigma x i i is equal to 2 to n that will be Poisson n minus 1 lambda. So, if we use this here x 1 and sigma x i from 2 to n these will be independent. So, this can be written as the product of this probability. So, it becomes probability of x 1 equal to 0 into probability of sigma x i from 2 to n is equal to t divided by probability t is equal to t. So, that is equal to e to the power minus lambda, lambda to the power 0. So, that term will not come. Then this is following Poisson n minus 1 lambda. So, it is becoming e to the power minus n minus 1 lambda, n minus 1 lambda to the power t divided by t factorial and then probability t is equal to t that is e to the power minus n lambda n lambda to the power t into t factorial. So, these terms get cancelled out and we are left with n minus 1 by n t. So, 
h t is equal to 1 minus 1 by n to the power t this is u m v u e of e to the power minus lambda. So, this Rao Blackwell Lehman Shafi theorem is extremely useful to determine the u m v u e for various functions where the method of lower bounds is not applicable. Uh, before we discuss other examples, let me also give some further uh, relationship between the completeness and independence etcetera. Now, there is a famous result called Basu's theorem, where we consider certain statistics whose distribution does not depend upon the parameter. So, I define what is known as ancillary statistic. So, a a statistic let me call it <coughs> v of x is said to be ancillary if the distribution of ancillary for say parameter theta if the distribution of v x does not depend on theta. For example, if I consider say x 1, x 2, x n follows normal mu 1 and I consider t as say x 2 minus x 1, x 3 minus x 1 and so on x n minus x 1. Then the distribution of this does not depend on mu. So, t is ancillary here. let me call it v here because t v use for the sigma x i here or x bar. Then we have the following theorem called Basu's theorem named after d Basu. Let t be sufficient and boundedly complete. So, if it is complete or automatically bounded completeness will be true. Let V x be ancillary for theta, then T x and V x are independently distributed. Let us look at the proof of this. So, let A be any set in the space of values of V. Okay. So, if I consider probability of V x belonging to A, then this will be independent of theta, because the distribution of V x does not depend upon theta. So, this is going to be independent of theta. So, if we want to write a statement like this, uh, P theta V x belonging to A, this is some constant say alpha, alpha is a constant. Now, let us consider a function say w of t that is equal to probability of v x belonging to a given t. Now, this is a probability so, w is a bounded function, w is a bounded function. Now, let us consider expectation of w t minus alpha. 
Now, what this is going to be? This is expectation of probability v x belonging to a given t. Now, this expectation is over what? This conditional probability is a function of t. So, this is expectation over t minus alpha. Now, this will become nothing but probability of v x belonging to a minus alpha, which is actually equal to 0 for all theta. But t is boundedly complete, t is boundedly complete. So, this implies that probability that w t is equal to alpha must be 1. But what is this statement? This statement is equivalent to saying probability of v x belonging to a given t is equal to alpha. What was alpha? Alpha was probability v x belonging to a. That means, the conditional probability of v given t is same as unconditional probability of v. This is with probability 1. So, t and v are independently distributed. Uh, let us look at one or two applications of this here. So, if we consider this problem here, x 1, x 2, x n follows normal mu 1 and here t is equal to sigma x i, this is complete and sufficient. So, this is complete and sufficient and x 2 minus x 1, x 3 minus x 1, x n minus x 1 has a distribution which does not depend upon mu. Then t and v will be independently distributed and of course, this is al uh, also a well known result in the normal distribution theory that sigma x i and s square x bar and s square are independently distributed. So, that is a uh, the proof is actually through this only that we firstly show that x bar and x 2 minus x 1, x 3 minus x 1 etcetera are independent and therefore, since s square is directly a function of this therefore, x bar and s square are also independent. So, that is confirmed here. Let us generalize this example to normal mu sigma square. So, let us consider say x 1, x 2, x n follows normal mu sigma square. So, let us take say sigma square is equal to sigma naught square be known. If that is so, then x bar is complete and sufficient. And at the same time, if we consider sigma x i minus x bar whole square, this is ancillary. Bar mu. Therefore, x bar and sigma x i minus x bar whole square are independent. Now, if we are writing this statement here, this sigma naught square does not play a role here, because this was arbitrarily fixed. So, here if we say it for all sigma naught square that means, x bar and sigma x i minus x bar whole square are independent in general here. So, we can say here since sigma naught square is arbitrary we can say that x bar and sigma x i minus x bar whole square are independent for normal mu sigma square case here. Let me take another application here. Suppose I fix mu is equal to mu naught. 
if we take this then sigma x i minus mu naught square is complete and sufficient. Let v be of the form say x bar minus mu naught divided by square root sigma x i minus mu naught square. You can see here if I divide by sigma here in the numerator and the denominator then the distribution will become free from the parameters here. This is ancillary here. So, sigma x i minus mu naught square and v they are independent here. Let me consider some further applications of the minimum variance and bias estimation. Let x have hypergeometric distribution that is the probability mass function is given by m c x n minus m c n minus x divided by n c n. Here x is from 0 1 to n and of course, subject to the restrictions that x is also less than or equal to m and n minus x is less than or equal to n minus m. Here n is assumed to be known and m is unknown. Okay. So, we consider estimation of m. So, if we write down the distribution it is already in the factorizable form. So, x is certainly sufficient. Okay. So, x is sufficient here. Let us look at the completeness to check completeness of x. Let us take expectation of a function of x is equal to 0 then that is equivalent to saying g x m c x n minus m c n minus x divided by n c n is equal to 0 for x equal to 0 to n subject to those conditions here for all m. If I take m is equal to 0 here then this will give me g 0 is equal to 0. If I take m is equal to 1 then that will give me g 0 n minus 1 c n plus g 1 n minus 1 c n minus 1. Now, g 0 is 0 that means g 1 is also 0. So, by induction we can prove that it can be shown that m is that x is complete. Now, what is expectation of x? That is equal to n by n into m. So, that means expectation of n by n x is equal to m. So, x is complete and sufficient and this is an unbiased estimator of m. So, we conclude that by Rao, Blackwell, Lehman, Shafi theorem, we conclude that n by n x is u m v u e of m. Let us 
let me give one more application. Let us consider say a random sample from a binomial distribution with parameter say k and theta where k is known. Let us define a function say g theta is equal to probability of 1 that is k theta into 1 minus theta to the power k minus 1. We want the unbiased estimator of this. Let us define a function say h x 1 is equal to 1. If x 1 is equal to 1, it is 0. If x 1 is not equal to 1, then expectation of h x 1 is equal to g theta. So, by Rao Blackwell Lehman Shafi theorem, psi t that is here t is equal to sigma x i is complete and sufficient. So, that is equal to expectation of h x 1 given t this is u m v u e of g theta. So, we can consider here evaluation of this psi t function that will be equal to probability of x 1 is equal to 1 given sigma x i is equal to t that is equal to probability of x 1 is equal to 1 sigma x i from 2 to n is equal to t minus 1 divided by probability sigma x i 1 to n is equal to t. Now, sigma x i will follow binomial n k theta sigma x i from 2 to n will follow binomial n minus 1 k theta. So, if we substitute these values here probability of x 1 is equal to 1 into probability of sigma x i 2 to n is equal to t minus 1 probability sigma x i is equal to t 1 to n then that is equal to k theta into 1 minus theta to the power k minus 1 and then this is equal to k into n minus 1 c t minus 1 theta to the power t minus 1 1 minus theta to the power k into n minus 1 minus t minus 1 divided by k n c t theta to the power t into 1 minus theta to the power k n minus t. The terms which contain theta they get cancelled out here and we are left with k into n minus 1 factorial divided by k n factorial into k t into k n minus t factorial divided by k n minus t minus k plus 1 factorial. So, if we consider this function here that is the u m v u e of g theta here. Let me end uh, with one example in the exponential distribution. Suppose we have a random sample from exponential distribution with parameter say lambda and we are looking at the reliability function r t is equal to e to the power minus lambda t. We want the umv ue of this. So, define the function g x 1 is equal to 1 if x 1 is greater than t it is equal to 0 if x 1 is less than or equal to t. So, expectation of g x 1 is equal to e to the power minus lambda t and expectation of g x 1 given t that is equal to say d of t is u m v u e of r t that is for the reliability function the minimum variance and bias estimator will turn out to be the conditional expectation of g x 1 given t. So, if I evaluate this that is nothing but probability of x 1 greater than t given t is equal to t 
where t is equal to sigma x i here. Now, here we need the conditional distribution of x 1 given t. In the discrete case, we were able to write down it as the joint probability divided by the probability of this term, but in the case of continuous distribution, we cannot write that statement. So, what we do? We derive the conditional distribution of x 1 given t and uh, this distribution can be easily derived. The conditional distribution of the conditional distribution of x 1 given t is equal to t is derived as f of x 1 given t is equal to t minus x 1 to the power n minus 2 divided by t to the power n minus 1 into n minus 1 0 less than x 1 less than t it is equal to 0 elsewhere. So, this probability of x 1 greater than t then turns out to be simply one minus minimum of x 1 greater than y. So, that is equal to uh, the conditional probability of x 1 greater than t given t is equal to t turns out to be simply minimum of t and okay. So, there is a confusion here. I should have used a different notation here x 1 here. So, this turns out to be um, there is a problem here. Let us use a different notation y here and this is y. This is y is equal to say small y. So, this is y here y. So, then this will be equal to minimum of uh, y and t divided by y to the power n minus 1. So, we conclude that 1 minus minimum of y and t divided by y to the power n minus 1 is u m v u e of reliability function in the case of exponential distribution. So, we have seen here today that the properties of sufficiency and completeness are extremely helpful in determining the problem of or solving the problem of minimum variance and bias estimation. Essentially, it reduces the problem to find out the unique unbiased estimator which can be then easily determined. Uh, in the next class, we consider uh, the different approaches to the estimation. Uh, there is a approach of invariance and then Bayesian and min max estimation I will be introducing in the next classes.